Hey guys, I are Nupcake here, back with the final part in my Amnesia the Dark Descent walkthrough. And to be honest, this isn't so much part of the walkthrough as it is a display of all the different endings in the game. In the last episode, we completed the final progress area of the game, which is the Inner Sanctum, and I brought you to the door of the Orb Chamber, and we can go inside where Alexander will be doing stuff and we can access three of the four different endings of the game. And the first ending we're going to go for is the one that I'm sure many people have gotten on their first run through, which is the revenge ending, where we stop Alexander. And I am not going to waste time listening to Alexander. All you have to do is knock down these different pylons. Quite easy. That's the idea. You're a scary looking naked man. I don't want you to live. Hooray! You get to see Alexander explode. Sort of. And the shadow will slowly take over the room. It was my greatest triumph, and I never looked back. You think I was afraid of fleeing Brennenberg? <laughs> Quite the contrary. I knew it was my purgatory. Hellfire made to wash away my sins. There's no denying the things I've done. But I have paid my tribute. I gave them that awful man. I did the right thing. And as you leave, Brennenberg collapses. And the credits roll. But... I'm not going to watch the credits. As you see at the bottom of the screen, there is a six character code that can be used to access an extras file in the game directory. And if you get three of the four different endings, then you will get the three parts of the password to open the encrypted archive. But anyways, we need the other endings to get that. So, We're going to load up from the orb chamber again and get the second ending, which is the good ending. Now, I guess the other good ending, because personally, I think the revenge ending is a good ending. I was wondering if you were going to show up. I see Agrippa convinced you to run some errands. Tell me, is everything nice and clear now? Am I the villain? Good and evil. Such comforting concepts, but hardly applicable. Are you so blind that you see no good in me or evil in Agrippa? As Alexander talks, the different pylons channeling energy into, I guess, an orb is there, you can't really tell. But. They're doing stuff, and there are giant rocks spinning in the ceiling. Because rocks are fun to look at. Also, you can touch this if you want to get hurt and push back. And the rocks spin faster and faster.
Now the reason this is the good ending, or one of the good endings, is because Agrippa wanted us to put his head in this portal that is going to appear here. And that's exactly what we're going to do, because we have Agrippa's head right here. But we have to wait on the portal to appear first. The downside about these good ending and the bad ending is that it takes a while just sitting there. Yeah. I can finally return home. Not quite open. Putting Agrippa's head in, the portal will dissipate. Alexander will again fade from existence, and the shadow will take over much more than it did in the original one. Or in the other ending. And then we get a little cutscene of Agrippa talking to Wire. Along with a whole bunch of little sparkly things. Yeah, I forgot you can walk around in here. There he is. Do you see him, Vaya? He Lord deserves I, so much more. Please, help him. I know you can. You gotta make it to the fireflies. Don't worry, Daniel. It will be all right. And the credits roll again. And you see down at the bottom we have yet another of the endings. Or rather, yet another one of the fragments of the password. And now we'll go ahead and get the third ending. Which is usually just labeled the bad ending. It requires so much work to get. I was wondering if you were going to show up. I see a grip of convinced you don't We just have to sit here and do nothing. Tell me, is everything nice and clear now? Am I the villain? Good and evil. Such comforting concepts, but hardly applicable. Are you so blind that you see no good in me? Or evil in a gripper. 
The interesting part about all this is that we can deduce from what's happening that Alexander is some sort of alien, so clearly the History Channel is correct. There are ancient aliens that make giant rocks float in circles and make portals in blue fire. Also, during either this or Agrippa's ending, you can uh, knock over two of the three pylons and the portal will still be created properly. But, not really necessary to do. This ending and the hidden fourth ending are pretty similar in the fact that the same kind of thing happens, it just happens a slightly different way. Alexander does look a little creepy though, with his levitating and nakedness. And the portal should be popping up any second now. Do you see it? A whole other world. Oh, isn't it beautiful? I can finally return home. Alexander goes in there. Please let me go. And we get another flashback sort of thing. Haunted by all of the things that we've done while here in Brandenburg. won't be forgotten. You will be celebrated forever. And the credits roll. And we now have the final piece of the password. So you can now access the extras stuff in the game directory. And I'll put the password in the description. However, there is one other ending. But, that's not in the orb chamber, that is in the cells. And this is another one of the waiting ones, but because there's not really much story going on while we sit around and wait, I'm going to use the time to talk a little bit about the game, making the walkthroughs and stuff like that. So, we'll just stand up here while Alexander finishes his crap, and then I'll start my little monologue. It does explain so much of your behavior. You never did finish what you set out to do. You talked about redemption, how you would face the orb's shadow and save our work and me. I will grant you another chance to redeem yourself. You can wait here and stop the shadow. Thank you, friend. And the fourth and final ending of the game involves just that. You stand here and do nothing. 
But like I said, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the game and the walkthrough and stuff. Uh, first off, this was my first big walkthrough thing that I've ever done. I've written a couple little guides for various games, but this was my first straight up walkthrough, especially for a complete game. And I've gotta say, it was a bit rocky getting started, but overall I enjoyed it, and I definitely look forward to doing more in the future. Uh, for the most part, I plan on doing a couple of different things with my channel. Uh, one of them is doing what I'm doing right now, doing walkthroughs, and I guess you could say kind of a second part to that is I was going to do guides for other things where that's applicable. You know, for this game, there's not really a guide involved so much as it is walking you through each part of the game, but some other games like uh, MMOs and the like would be better suited for me making guides of how you do certain things, you know, stuff like that. But I was also just going to do some Let's Plays for some games. Uh, for example, right now I'm looking at a game called Path of Exile, which is a lot like Diablo 2. Uh, in some ways it's been called a better Diablo 3 than Diablo 3 was, so if you haven't checked that out, be sure to do so. It's pretty cool. But anyways, I'm planning on doing a Let's Play of that. I'll probably just stick to one class, but I'm not really sure yet. Um, on top of that, I've been thinking about starting streaming, but unfortunately my internet connection isn't really the best for that. I have a decent download speed, but my upload speed is kind of crappy. Oh, let's not stand on that. So I may have to put off that for a little while. But as soon as I have a decent internet connection to stream decent quality video, I will be doing that. Until then, it'll probably mostly be videos. I will potentially play with any of you guys or with friends and do those as videos as well. But streaming may be out of the question for the time being. Um, as I've said in all of the other videos, I really do hope this walkthrough has been enjoyable by some people and it's helped other people finish off different parts of the game because I know not every area in the game is just oh you just walk there and you're done there are a couple hidden items but I'm sure no one is watching this part before looking at other parts of the guide but in the event that you are as I said in my very first video I do highly recommend you try playing through the game before using a guide. The game is much more enjoyable that way. But I do not feel bad at all about trying to help people that do need the help. And also, if you can't figure it out, you can't figure it out, so don't feel bad about that either. But all in all, I did very much enjoy making this, and a couple of other things that I'm planning on doing walkthroughs and guides of. Like I said, I was going to do the Let's Play of Path of Exile. Try that out, see how that goes. I was going to do walkthroughs for the Penumbra games, because a couple people suggested that to me. And the Penumbra series was also made by Frictional Games. They're very similar to Amnesia. The atmosphere is a little different, but they're still very good games. And if you have a chance to play them, I would definitely check them out. They're well worth it. But as far as that, the Penumbra series and Path of Exile, I really don't have many other ideas for walkthroughs or playthroughs or anything else. So if anyone has any ideas, please do let me know. Um, I'm willing to do any kind of game. I have been a gamer for a long time, and I like all kinds of games other than I don't really care too much for racing games or just, you know, they can be fun, like, especially the older ones like Mario Kart, but, you know, the newer ones, they just don't have a whole lot of appeal to me. Um, unfortunately, at the time, I am restricted to doing PC gaming. I don't have anything like an Ogato to record off of my 360 or anything else. I am looking into that, but... 
like I said, right now, I've pretty much just got the PC. And to be honest, my current PC setup kinda sucks. It's a pretty cheap PC. I basically bought something at Walmart and then threw a graphics card and a power supply in it. Um, I do have a PC planned out that I will get in the future when I have the money for it, but you know, I'm not really sure when I'll have the money. Stop hurting me. Hmm. Well, anyway, all in all, by the end of the game you should have a little more than a hundred tinder boxes. I probably missed a few, but there's probably 120 overall. There's a few that I haven't gotten yet from this point in the save. Uh, as far as barrels of oil, I think I got all of those. And you get about 31 extra bottles of oil. Um, do note, I'm sure you guys have noticed, but I've had my lantern out almost this entire walkthrough and I have not lost a single bit of oil. That's because I modified part of the settings for the game, so I did not lose oil. I did that just to make the walkthrough go a little bit smoother so I didn't have to worry about running out and then the quality of the video being bad or anything like that. Um, on top of that, as you guys noticed, I did go through the entire game without exploiting any glitches intentionally. I do realize there were a couple times when things didn't spawn when they should have. To be honest, I've never heard of it happening before, so it was new to me just like you guys. However, there are a couple of other exploitable glitches in the game, namely with the physics engine that the game uses. And the two big ones I know of are there are a couple places that you can phase through the walls or the ceiling. Uh, there's one in the, uh, the main hall, I think it is. Somewhere in there, there's a window that you can jump into and then squeeze through the ceiling and then get straight into the refinery without having to clear out the lab and other stuff. Um, and there's another area in the sewers where uh, there are some rocks and there's a kerink that you can hear behind them, or so you would think. But if you jump on the rock to the far left and then back into it while crouched, you will fall through it. And then you can walk along the outside of the level if you're careful. On top of that, there's one other big way to exploit the physics engine, and that is barrels. If you roll a barrel towards you, and then save and load, when you load, the barrel will continue moving towards you even when it hits you, and it will push you through doors or walls and allow you to access various parts of the game that you can't normally get to. And it can allow you to skip parts but note there are certain things you need in the game to progress regardless of whether or not you do that, so do keep that in mind if you want to do a glitch run through the game. Um, it can cut off a lot of time if you want to try a speed run. I've not much for speed running in general. I'm going to die very soon. Well, there goes my only friend, Mr. Bucket. Oh well, I tried. But anyways, I showed you guys the revenge ending, the good ending, and the bad ending. And this ending could also be called a bad ending, but personally I just call it the facepalm ending because if you get this ending, you either really, really, really suck at the game, or you tried to get it. I don't think there's really anything else I have to say about this. Um, like I said, I do really hope you guys uh, liked the walkthrough, whether it, you just enjoyed watching it or it helped you out. I'm really glad if I could help or brighten anyone's day. It seems strange to brighten someone's day with such a dark game, but it's possible. But, anyways, I think it's about time for this to finish.
finish up. It'll spawn the last little bit, and I will die. Well. To be honest, I've never actually waited on this ending before, because it takes so freaking long. This could be a little stool. Looks like a mushroom. Very strange mushroom, but a mushroom. Oh, also, one thing that you guys have commented on, or a couple people have. Yes, I realize that that is a very pixely looking thingy. And yes, I realize that while I use 720p in the video, this game in particular has somewhat low quality. The biggest reason for that is, like I said, my computer's kind of crappy, and this game is rather graphics intensive. You know, there's not really anything I could do to get around that. So my options were either A, record in 480p, which is really freaking small and hard to play with, or B, use lower graphics settings, and then I could record it in 720p. And I chose that just because, you know, even if it's pixely, it still looks better to record in 720p. And at the end, you get the same stuff happening as you did in the bad ending. Thank you, my friend. Your sacrifice won't be forgotten. You will be celebrated forever. Yep. Anyways, I will let the credits roll for just a little bit. Anyway, guys, as I've said at the end of every single one of my videos, and I've said it, I think, twice already this video, I do hope you guys enjoyed these walkthroughs, this video, I hope to help some people out. And even if I only helped out one or two people, I still think it's worth it. It doesn't take me too much to make these right now. And all I've really wanted to do with these is just help out a little bit. And if I could do that at all, then I've done my job, I feel like. But I hope you guys liked the video. And feel free to let me know by liking the video or any of the other videos in the series. Uh, let me know what you think of the series or any ideas you have with a comment or a message. Uh, you can favorite the playlist, share it with anyone you think might need help, or just share it somewhere. Um, last but not least, if you really like the video or like m any of my videos, subscribe if you want to check out more of my stuff. I am very open to suggestions as for what I should do next, so don't hesitate to give me an idea or anything like that. I'm very open to it. As long as it's not some really terrible game, then I will give it a shot and try to figure out something I can do with it. Um, I have a streaming account, which I will link in the description along with a Twitter I've set up and I might link a Facebook page if I set up a page for it that you guys can look to for new videos, etc. But anyways, for now, this is Iron Up Cake signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with this. And until next time, guys. See ya.